Hey you guys, so I wanted to come on here and warn you about um, not really a couple of deliverance ministries, just one of them, and it was Freedom Encounters Ministries. That's one of the ministries that I was posting the videos about on my community posts and stuff, and um, I referenced one of them in the recent vlog that I did, so I kind of have to come back and do some damage control because uh, I don't want to be responsible for y'all being used or, you know, taken advantage of or anything. And um, I first just want to start off by saying that I did have the Lord humble and correct me in the sense of refusing his hand if he wanted to use one of these ministries to help me or to help somebody else. That's not saying that God is in agreement with the system and what they're doing. I personally started a fast yesterday to pray against that, and I'm going to get into that in a few minutes. But, um, like I tried to emphasize, there is a difference between you throwing your money at a deliverance minister, just, you know, in complete gullibility, and God is not leading you to go to this person, and you pretty much waste all of your money because you probably will not get anything out of the deliverance session, and the Father actually leading you to one of these people to use them as merely a tool because He wants to help you, okay? So, and I think I was saying how, um, there's a lot of broken systems in this world. The church itself is corrupt and broken, but the Holy Spirit still works through the church. So our desire and our goal is to seek what his will is through these broken systems and to just follow him and his leading and where he wants to go and who he wants to use. But just to throw your money at somebody or just to pursue any kind of minister without God's leading at all, that's actually what's going to get you abused, okay? So there is a difference. So what you need to do, if you are somebody who's seeking deliverance ministry like me, um, online and you don't have it available to you, you know, physically, especially if you're dealing with like, you know, altar fragmentation and parts and stuff like that. I don't think you're going to find anybody like that locally. <laughs> you know, you'll find all, uh, all of your access to people like that online. Um, be very, very prayerful and actually be patient and wait on the Lord to, you know, get back to you about whether you should go to that person or not and whether you should even give them your money in the first place, okay? And another thing, if the Father does choose to use this person, he's going to give you the funds to receive ministry from those people. So that makes all the difference. Are you led to do what you're doing, okay? Or are you just wanting to do it? So, um... I just kind of wanted to briefly, we all know that I don't speak briefly, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to try to like not make it too, too long. I just wanted to share my experience of Freedom Encounters Ministry. I went to, um, I have a video from Praying Medic in my Altars and Fragmentation playlist, and he made a video about it, just kind of giving you an understanding on what altars are and what fragments are. And I think I've kind of been using, um, I think I've kind of like been using the terms out of context in my case I don't have altars he did say that it doesn't matter whether you use altars or fragments but um the way he was you know describing it I would say that there is a difference altars kind of implies that you have altered personalities and um they are not demons they're Christians who don't even believe that you can have altars or you know basically split and fragmented parts of you they believe that they're all demons and that's not true okay I know that personally because I've had the Lord show me my fragments and dreams okay and I, I've been places and I've, I've experienced them doing different things that I don't have any control over so they're not demons okay they are fragments of your soul if you want the details about how that happened, just ask the Lord to show you and he will. It's your walk. But um, according to him, from the way he described it, which I would, I would completely agree with his description, um, is altars imply altered personalities. These are people who actually do... Um, they actually do live through multiple personalities in order to function and in order to kind of cope with uh, any trauma they may have experienced. And I have some videos about that in my playlist as well. That's going to be in the description box. Fragments are not, you can, are still pieces of you that have been split off, but they don't really manifest as strongly as multiple personality disorders. So I was like, okay, so I have fragments. <laughs> okay, so, uh, like I said, he did say that, you know, there's really no difference between the two, but I'm going to say there is because I don't have multiple personality disorder. Obviously, y'all can see that I'm not switching and flipping, you know, from like a child to like, you know, um, really intense things like that would be considered like multiple personality disorder or alter. So fragments, I would say fragments. So and so he made a video about it. So I'm like, okay, well, he's a ministry that knows about this stuff. So I contacted him and I asked him if he personally did one-on-one -on -one deliverance sessions with uh, people who deal with that. And he said, no, 
he emailed me back and he uh, led me to a ministry who does and that was Freedom Encounters Ministry. I was posting all those videos for those of you who may have seen it. I deleted them now because I don't support them. And I'm going to tell you why. Uh, I was posting all their videos, their community posts, and th their videos are actually good. Um, you know, just, just a little, you know, <sighs> explanation of altars and stuff. But I would still watch the videos. I wouldn't go to them for ministry, but I, I would watch their videos. And uh, I'll put their channel below if y'all want to watch them, you know, because they're on their website and stuff. So you can understand, once again, what altars and fragments are and, you know, the ministry that's available to them and, you know, people who are dealing with that and stuff that need inner healing, but I wouldn't go to them. So I, you know, went to the website and I started watching all the videos and I basically started the process of, uh, hmm, I guess trying to seek them for deliverance. When I got towards the end, they give you a contact list for you to con contact one of the coaches or deliverance ministers, a part of their ministry, and according to what state that you're in. So in the state of Texas, I live in Texas, there were uh, three coaches and I emailed all of them. I just basically let them know my situation. I'm looking for a deliverance ministry. I deal with, you know, um, fragments, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the first one that got back to me was a man named Greg Young, Pastor Greg Young. That's his title, Pastor Greg Young. He emailed me, he emailed me first, and um, I was just trying to talk right then and there because the way I see it, like, I don't really have time to waste. Like, I'm trying to get delivered. I need help. <laughs> so um, he emailed me back, and um, I gave him my phone number. I was like, well, I'm free right now. You can call me. So we got on the phone. And in short, we talked for about an hour about absolutely nothing because I just feel like it was most of it was kind of idle conversation. But I, 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 maybe he wanted to get me comfortable and just share with me some of his like recent experiences in deliverance ministry, which I'm like, OK, like, I mean, he seemed pretty cool and pretty laid back. Like, I mean, one thing I did notice because I catch on to everything, you know, I did notice that he was uh, purposely being really, really nice to me. Uh, especially when I share with him that I do deal with rejection heavily. The whole uh, grouping, the self-rejection, rejection period, and fear of rejection, <laughs> okay? So whether it's spirits or strongholds or altars, I deal with all of it, okay? So I was just sharing with him my, my recent experience with uh, them that believe deliverance ministry and how that has literally scarred me for almost an entire year, and I don't want to experience that again. Um, I've shared with him some of the stuff that I do with that the Lord has revealed to me, you know, as far as witch covens and stuff and having fragments in the occult and just certain dreams that I've had and all that good stuff. All Everything that Dan Duvall talks about on his channel is exactly what I deal with, you know, and I'm just like, if you need to get to anybody, it would be Dan. But anyway, I'll, I'll probably talk about that later. So um, I just kind of shared it with him briefly just to give him an idea and uh, he shared with me as well that he's dealt with uh, vampires and so that doesn't throw y'all off. He's not talking about Hollywood vampires but there are people that have uh, created certain contracts with the enemy where they can take in certain spirits into themselves and they actually are living that lifestyle. Yes they do drink blood, they do all those things. Everything you see on TV is real okay. They, Hollywood tries to make it seem really sci-fi but no this is real stuff. It's really happening so he's dealt with people in the occult who are in that branch he said he's had a sister levitate you know um in deliverance ministry so i guess he was just sharing that with me like you know your situation doesn't scare me and i'm like okay great <laughs> you know because uh not that i'm a vampire you know that i, I don't plan on levitating and i don't think i will be but uh the stuff that god has shown me um hmm, it's some stuff okay so there's like i said there's no telling what can of worms you would open up with that so, um, and so Nicole, which I have not met Nicole yet, but I still consider her a good friend in my heart because I love Nicole. Hey, Nicole. <laughs> so me and Nicole, uh, she is like my twin sister in the spirit and she's the only sister I know that really, well, she's not the only sister I know that deals with fragments, but, uh, for some reason I feel more of a connection with Nicole in that aspect. And, uh, y'all probably see Nicole comment often on my stuff. <laughs> so she is his Lily youtube channel and uh she is always looking out for me when i was trying to like get a car from craigslist she was like sis it's a scam you know i would have never even known unless she said something and she was the one that pointed out to me when i was posting a uh, freedom encounters videos on my community post that uh they charge for services and i didn't even see that yet simply because i was just going according to the pro the procedure they gave me in the email to watch this video then that video next and then do this so i didn't really have time to like go to the website and just like really you know search out what they do and stuff like that 
So, but she brought that to my attention, and I was like, okay. I finally got to a video where the older lady, who is the wife, I'm assuming, she, well, she's not assuming, she's the wife. Ugh. I'm sorry, that was really disgusting. But, um, so, and she was just saying in the video how they do charge for ministry, and that they are led by the Lord with, um, I guess permission to do so she was kind of just basically alluding to they're led with what the rate should be and but their individual coaches and deliverance ministers who would be assisting you personally they have their own rates that they choose to charge and that they also had to pay them to be trained uh, so it's, in, in a way it's kind of like giving back you know so and she just she was just like just be very prayerful and ask the Lord if this is the ministry that you want to help you so that way there was no real obligation or you know, I'm going to talk about this in a few minutes. But, you know, just basically, there's no uh, obligation, you know, just make sure that God wants you to come to this ministry, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, that seems really humble. You know, it's, it's not a situation where somebody's like, you're going to pay me 250 or 260 you know, whether you like it or not, you know. So I was like, okay, well, they're really humble about it. They give you the opportunity to, you know, pray about it and give permission or, you know, make room for the Lord to say, no, don't give them people your money, you know. So I was like, okay, so... So what what she was speaking in reference to when I finally got to that step via email, it was it was basically like a eighty dollar seminar they wanted you to pay for. And basically, I didn't even really like check out what the seminar was. I think it was just like some type of downloadable information packet about deliverance ministry. Like they just want you to understand what deliverance ministry is, why Christians need it, what they personally believe and teach, and I guess just to kind of give you like some foundational info on like fragments and stuff that you don't even know what the heck you're dealing with, but they want you to pay $80 for it. And you cannot, you cannot go to the next step unless you pay that $80. It's like, it's, it's like, er, they stopped you. It's like, honey, you was about to go, you know, you saw Jesus in like the, the, uh, the mid room and you know, you was about to go touch the hem of his garment and they were like, Hey, you can't get in here unless you give us $80 first, <laughs> you know, so that's literally how it is. But the only thing I was able to get access to was the contact list without paying the $80 because I was like, I ain't about to pay you the $80 until I can talk to somebody first and try to get an idea of what they charge, you know, because I'm like, okay, so you, the $80 was just for the seminar, just for you to continue to go forward with the process. That's not even talking to the coaches yet that she said has their own rate of what they charge for deliverance ministry. So I'm not paying you no $80, you know, so I, I skip, kind of skipped and moved around. I like, I found the contact list and that's how I got access to Greg because he had emailed me back first. So now here's my issue with this. You already know how I am. I'm going to just, just, just give it to you completely raw. So I'm on the phone with this man and like I said, I could tell that he was being purposely nice to me, not, not in a fraudulent way, but just, uh, I actually do like that. I do, I actually do respect the fact that if you are somebody in deliverance ministry and somebody came to you and they share with you, Hey, I deal with rejection. You already know you're going to have to deal with this person a lot more, uh, delicately than you would another Christian because they're very sensitive. They have fragments that are easily shattered. You know, they break down, they cry. I cry all the time. Y'all see me cry 24 seven. So I like the fact that after he heard that he was just really nice to me and he knew how to speak to me. So I did notice that I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, so, and, um, I just got right to it and I just asked him, I said, well, I did watch the videos and I saw the lady said that, you know, the coaches y'all charge y'all's own rate. So, how much is it? You know, basically I asked him like, do you charge, you know, for a session and how does that work? Is I was discussing all of this with him firsthand on the phone before we started anything. I was asking him, um, number one, do you charge? Maybe I don't, maybe every coach doesn't charge. Maybe you just have somebody with a pure heart and a pure spirit who's not going to require money from anybody. I don't know. You know, you just want to have that hope there. So I asked him that. The second question was, uh, if so, how much? And is it every single time that we have a session? Or do you kind of, will you work with the person? You know, so I'm asking him all these questions. And he just basically, like, he was kind of subtly dancing around the question. Like, I noticed that he never really answered me directly with a yes or a no. He would always just kind of, like, you know, make reference back to the $80 seminar and just talk about how you have to pay for the seminar. So basically with his answer, he actually was implying that he doesn't charge because I'm, y'all know how I talk. I was pretty blunt with him. I asked him directly, probably like three or four times on the phone, do you charge? I need to know now and how much before I, you know, decide to go through with this process. And he never answered me. So 
that's somebody after this experience i wasn't thinking this or picking up on this on the phone call but after you know this experience and stuff after he emailed me back a couple days later that's somebody that's really learned how to finagle their way around questions like this and i wouldn't be surprised i find it very interesting that people who are like learning deliverance ministry in that regard when it comes to fragments and altars and stuff that they have to be trained by the other christians or the ministry and i'm just like what are they training you about? I mean, as far as like skill and experience with like, you know, a certain strategy of how to deal with this, that makes a lot of sense to me. You definitely need training in that. That's understandable. But I'm just like, I'm sure they're probably training y'all too on like, okay, you know, y'all, we're going to get questions about money. You know, there's going to be Christians that are going to come to you and ask, why do you charge? So this is what you say. And the way he was responding to me, especially with me being a very blunt and vocal person, I directly asked him like three or four times on the phone in the beginning of the phone call, do you charge? How much do you charge? That is information I need to know for myself for I, so I can decide whether I want to, you know, continue to go forward with this deliverance ministry. You know, I need to know like what kind of funds I need or whatever. He never answered my question. That's some BS already. Excuse my French whatever you want to call it. That is whatever you want to call it. Bullcrap BS. I'm going to say BS because I feel like you did a vulgar thing and it's a vulgar word. Okay. Because y'all know that when it comes to me dealing with people or maybe you don't know, I discern like to the 10th power with everybody that I'm dealing with. So I feel like for you to go forward and kind of do something like that, you're having a conversation with somebody who's supposed to be a sister in Christ and you're supposed to be a man of God. You're in a deliverance ministry a ministry at that where you have to have yourself the character in the heart of Jesus for his flock. You are shady enough, like a wolf in sheep's clothing, to not even answer my question directly. So if you didn't have ulterior motives, why you couldn't just tell me up front what you charge? Why were you dancing around the question? Like, so, you know, that's already kind of showing you that like they don't have pure motives with this ministry. At least he doesn't. There's several different coaches a part of this one ministry. But, honey, according to y'all, y'all training all the same people. So maybe you a wolf, too. <laughs> I'm just saying, like... And that's just how I see stuff. Y'all already know how I felt when I was doing videos about David Eels ministry and my experience with them via email. I could never talk to David Eels personally. So my thing is, if you got people on your team that's making it look bad for everybody, that make me think that you like that too. And if you're not like that, then you need to come out and you need to correct that situation. You need to correct the people that's a part of your ministry and a part of your team to be like, no, we don't do that. I apologize that you experienced that. If you don't do that, then y'all all snakes. That's, that's just how I see it. I'm not saying that they're not Christians or that they're not born again, but you need a, a huge, you know, whip against your back from the Lord. That's all I'm saying. So everybody don't have the, the Lord's heart just because you're born again. That don't mean nothing. So I'm telling y'all because four times at least three or four times I asked him he never said yes he never told me what his rate was he always kind of like it was kind of like an answer that was like well you know we have the $80 seminar and you know you would have to pay for that and then you know then he, he would answer like that so if I'm gonna answer you like that that's me implying that I don't charge the only thing you would have that's what somebody's gonna think of you're answering them like that like you only have to pay for the $80 seminar but when it comes to me, as that was my whole point in getting on the phone with you. That was the whole point of me contacting you as a personal coach because I wanted to know what you charge. I didn't. I don't want you to tell me what they charge. I already sent it on the website. I know they charge eight dollars for a seminar. What do you charge? He couldn't answer my question. So, uh, and on the phone call, he just shared with me how he was like in a car accident with his daughter some years ago and he basically was like her airbag so he just shattered so many parts of his body and stuff like that and he went through he's still going through surgeries you know and all this other stuff and then he shared with me how he has like a gofundme account not that he wanted me to so into it he was just sharing with me his testimony you know how god is using him and you know and uh so he has a gofundme account where christians are still sewing you know as far as you know him needing the financial needs to continue to get his surgeries and stuff and i was like oh wow like that's crazy you know i was like well and like it made me feel like more appreciative of him not really compassionate i felt more appreciative of him because i feel like you know for you to be somebody who experienced something like that and you're still not even fully healed like in your body but you're helping people with deliverance ministry like that's that's actually very special to me so i wasn't going to sew into the gofundme account because i'm trying to you know utilize my money wisely but um he did share that with me and um it made me respect him more as a deliverance minister and Right now, after everything happened, I'm going to say, and this is my opinion, I think that 
And I'm not saying that these are his intentions, but this is what I feel. So I have a right to my opinion. If he shares that with everybody who comes to him, it, it kind of makes me feel like he kind of uses that sob story as a way of kind of to gain your trust a little bit more as a deliverance minister or... Maybe he wants you to sew into the GoFundMe account, too. And um, I, I don't know. I just, it's just kind of like, well, why not throw this in there, you know, to make myself seem a little bit even more, you know, legit and credible. And maybe they can have more compassion and mercy on me. Like, I'm not saying that he didn't experience what he did. And I was even kind of questioning that afterwards. Because, like, I found the GoFundMe account. When he was talking to me about it on the phone, I actually, like, was on my phone, like, looking it up. And I found him. And I saw his face and everything and what he looked like. And he... His face was actually, you know, kind of, I saw like evidence of a car accident. I was like, wow, you know, and I saw the GoFundMe account of people who sold a little bit and, you know, the remaining, you know, needs or funds. And, um, I just, I'm, I'm gonna let the Lord deal with that. Cause I just, I don't know. I just kind of feel like the way he deal, he dealt with me was shady. So I question everything else, you know, so this is what happened. So I asked him, I was like, okay, so uh, when it comes to us, like starting the process for my deliverance, I was like, how long? Like, what I have to wait when's as soon as I can get, you know, a deliverance session. And he was just like, well, I'm going to be busy up until the 26th of this month. So today is, what, the 14th? This is probably, like, uh, four or five days ago. Yeah, so basically I had to, like, wait till a much later date. And he was like, after the 26th, that's when we can, you know, get you scheduled, you know, get you in. And we can start, you know, the process, deliverance, healing process, you know. Just go ahead and finish the four-step procedure on our website and, you know, the $80 seminar, basically. You know, we can start, you know, and, uh, he, the, <laughs> sorry, I'm just thinking about, like, these people are such freaking scams, man, because, like, you can, you can tell, like, whatever training they received at this ministry is kind of, like, they put so much emphasis on this $80 seminar packet, like, it's something that you just have to have, like, I'm like, I don't have to pay, number one, I don't have to pay for your packet. I'm just speaking like general as, as an individual. I don't have to pay for your packet for me to learn about deliverance ministry. I can get that information for free from several other resources all over YouTube, all over Google. Number two, I'm not, I don't have to pay $80 for that. I'm sure whatever information you have to give me, number one, if it's the word of God, it should be free. I have an issue with this crap. This is why I just started a fast yesterday and I specifically prayed to the Lord about this and I'm, I'm against that in a few minutes, but I'm against all of that mess. I don't think that anything pertaining to the Lord should be sold for anything. It's been done for years. God has used it, but do I think that he wants that done? No, I do not. I, even as far as Christian books, I don't believe that you should be selling the word of God. I don't believe that at all. Okay, I don't want to get distracted right now. But um, he, they just put so much emphasis on like this, like you need to read this packet just to be prepared. You know, this is a part of your preparation for your services from us, from, you know, from our ministry and you just need this knowledge. And I'm like, I don't even know what's in there yet. You know, it's, I'm just kind of thinking like, well, number one, especially for me, I'm not really a babe in Christ. Like there's only so much that I'm not already, uh, already adept to. So the fact that I have to pay $80 just to kind of go forward, like I probably already know all the stuff that's in here. I don't even know what it is yet, but that's a waste of my money. <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to buy this packet. I just want deliverance from you. Why do I have to buy the packet? It's just like, and I'm like, if the packet is a whole bunch of information, why you can't just put that for free on your website? Why, why not, why not just have it as like a huge article or a blog for people who are pursuing ministry through you to go look at it and see it instead of having to purchase it as like this little packet. I don't know if it was like, you know, downloadable or whatever it was. It's just stupid, man. So anyway, so I agree with him on the phone. I was like, okay, all right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that. He was like, yeah, just go ahead and, you know, do the little finish that step, you know. And at that point, I guess I was just like, well, <sighs> the Lord wants to help me. I guess it's just what I'm going to have to do. So I was like, okay, I'll just pay that $80. Like, that's not too, too much, you know, compared to Invicta Ministries and stuff that's charging you $300 for a deliverance. That's all that other stuff. I was like, okay, $80 is not that, that bad. And, um, I just kind of like, I was just desperate. Like, I just need help. Okay. Which y'all can see that. <laughs> okay. So I was like, well, I'm gonna just go ahead and do it. Me and him got off the phone and, um, I didn't go through with it because of this. When I was talking to him, I don't know if y'all watch Dan Duvall's videos. I watch Dan. I love Dan. I love his ministry. Okay. And, uh, post Dan's videos a lot. I have them in several playlists as well. 
when Dan is talking and he's on his little podcast, on his video with his guests and his the, the brethren that he's helping through deliverance ministry, and they're talking about the certain things that they saw, different things that they challenged and spirits and dimensions and realms and stuff like that, you can tell that Dan is a very articulate individual who knows what the heck he's doing and what he's talking about. He's allowing you to become a part of the experience on his video. And when I listen to it, these are all things that I personally see that the Lord shows me that I'm dealing with fragment wise. And, you know, I experienced that same stuff. So I know that Dan is legit. He is somebody that he the experience, you can hear it on his channel. He knows this stuff. So I'm like, I know Dan could help me 100 percent. Now, with this individual, with Pastor Greg Young, to be honest, when he was speaking, he didn't sound like somebody that was seasoned to me. And that personally bothered me because I may not be dealing with like, my elbow is hurting me so bad. This is not okay. Yeah, I may not be somebody who's dealing with like all the, 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 the people that Dan deals with, like, you know, Illuminati government control and, you know, SRA victims, like people dealing with that high level stuff. I don't deal with it to that degree. I don't deal with like um any high level bondage like that but it's close enough it's very similar and for me I just feel like I would like the, the best quality experience with a deliverance session I want somebody who knows about all these layers I want you to know about it I want the Holy Spirit to have already dealt with you about it and the experience and the skill and the anointing that's Dan Duvall okay I can't get to Dan Duvall but I know what I wanted and I knew like what I needed especially if I'm giving you my money okay this is a mm, woo. Oh, man, I got to fire me when it comes to that stuff. Like, you want me to pay you hundreds of dollars? You better give me a hundred dollars worth of service, honey. You better tackle all of these different fragments. You better find Jezebel up in here. You better tear down all her kingdoms. Like, you you want me to pay you hundreds of dollars for deliverance. You better get all of that stuff taken care of. So with him, when I was talking to him, he did sound sweet and stuff. But I could just tell, like, he even his vocabulary, like, he didn't sound like somebody that was seasoned and appointed to do what he was doing. I don't know. He said he'd been doing it for 15 years, but experience is not the same thing as skill. That's two completely different things. You can be experienced and have done something for years, but still not have the anointing to carry out what you're doing. And I just feel like with him, if we were to start the procedure, you didn't spend all your money and you're probably only, only going to get so much more, so much help when you could probably get more than that with somebody else. So I had already decided that I wasn't going to go with him. I just didn't email him about it yet. So <clears throat> that's when I started going to like Dan Duvall's, you know, website and checking out his coaches and stuff like that. And honey, you can forget about going to Dan because Dan has no availability at all. <laughs> like Dan is completely booked. I went all the way up to like, um... Uh, like January, February, March, 2020. And Dan is just like simply not available. And like he is very high demand because he's like the main head of the ministry. I think you can watch his videos. I'm like, I'm sure everybody's trying to get to Dan. Uh, and even his rates are outrageous. Like his are like $100 an hour. I'm going to get into that in a few minutes, like I said. But um, I just, I listen to Dan and like I have such a confirmation in my spirit when listening to this man. I'm just like, that's the person who needs to be helping you. Um, he probably has coaches and ministers a part of his ministry that I'm, I'm hoping that he's trained them with the stuff that he knows and the way he's helping people because I would like to receive his kind of service from, you know, the people on his team. But um, couldn't get to Dan. He had no availability. His rates are outrageous, which discouraged me. I was not going to pay that for um for one hour. One hour is nothing. I mean, the time's been flying by so fast lately. Like one hour is not what it used to be like 10 years ago. Y'all y'all can probably feel that. One hour is, I can sit here and work on, like, probably not even get one section of a dream interpretation done in one hour. Like, I'd still be on the first part. <laughs> so, like, I, okay, anyway, um, getting ahead of myself. So, I would say, so he, he sent me, like, these spiritual warfare prayers, you know, like, he was sending me, like, these little downloadable stuff via email while I was on the phone with him, Pastor Greg Young, for me to just kind of read, for me to prepare my spirit for the deliverance session, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, you know, pray these prayers every day. You know, uh, if you need anything, just call me and let me know, you know, check up with me, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay. I never read them. I just, I just didn't. I don't know. So he waited like a day, like two days. I think on like the second day, he emailed me. He emailed me and he was like, hey, Brandy, just coming to check on you and, you know, see how you're doing. Did you uh, do the spiritual warfare prayers yet? 
and uh, read the stuff. Oh, and also, the rates that I usually receive from ministry is $250. So, so basically what you're telling me is, you assumed, okay, I'm going to give her like two days, you know, maybe, you know, after she done purchased the seminar, spent her $80 on the seminar, I'm going to give her about two days, you know, and, you know, check up on her to make it seem like I care about her. And it, I'm, I'm just, I'm just giving it to you the way it is. Because to be honest, it's just a whole bunch of BS. And that's, that's basically what it was. You waited two days because you figured it would take about two days for me to go ahead and go through the seminar. I already paid my money. That's the perfect time for you to kind of come back around. And you know, oh, how are you doing, Brandy? Are you doing okay? Did you go through the, the warfare prayers? Did you go, oh, by the way, oh, by the way, by the way, you charged 250 The 250 that you never told me that you charged when I was on the phone with you and I asked you three or four times specifically and directly because I wanted to know how much you charged before I spent my money on an $80 seminar that you did not tell me. You basically insinuated that you didn't charge anything. $250. So I just, I would love to know why wasn't that information that you could give me when I was on the phone with you, which was the purpose of me contacting you personally before we got anything started. That was what I called you for. Why couldn't you tell me then if that's usually what you get for your services? If it's a usual rate, why you couldn't usually tell me when he was on the phone? So he was trying to play the games. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to say it again because y'all laughed at me last time. Nappy-headed hoe games, okay? That, that kind of stuff. So the way he the way he was doing it, which I'm sure that's a part of y'all's corrupted training in that ministry, because I, I can't see nobody logically with a conscience and the Holy Spirit in them operating that way, unless your so-called ministry leaders probably trained you to operate that way with people who come to you for ministry. Don't tell them how much you charge as a deliverance minister until they give us the $80 for the seminar first. Give them a couple days. So I guess the way they see it is... If they already put the $80 uh, investment into the seminar, they kind of don't have a choice but to continue with us uh, and pick a coach. So you have to continue to give us your money because I guess for the person, it's going to feel like, well, I already gave him my $80. I already kind of wasted my money, so I may as well continue to go forward with some type of coach and give them even more money. Like, no. No, boo. It don't work like that. So I emailed him back. I did. I said, hi, Pastor Greg Young. I said, I wasn't going to tell you. I said, you got to me first, but I decided to go with somebody else for deliverance ministry. And no, I did not get a chance to read the warfare prayers, and I did not pay for the $80 seminar. And I'm glad that I didn't, because that's information that you could have shared with me when I was on the phone with you. Everything I just said to y'all a few minutes ago is exactly what I told him in that email. I called him out. I rebuked him. I told him that oh, that whole ministry needs to repent. First of all, you should not be charging anybody for deliverance ministry. And secondly, $250 is completely outrageous and the way that he gave it to me was like it kind of made it seem like he's charging 250 for each session y'all already know how I feel about that I just made a video about that I took it down but my thing is you don't know what's going to happen in that session which is why I said if you're going to go to somebody who is charging for deliverance ministry make sure you have the father's permission first because he's the one that's going to assure whether it's going to be an effective and successful ministry